Hello everybody, my name is Hope and welcome back to my channel. I like musicals, they're a big part of my life today. We're going to be talking about exactly what's in the title. Now, I know you're probably thinking that title is totally clickbait. There is no such thing as a One Direction fan fiction in a musical, but there is. And it's this musical and you wouldn't believe it existed unless it exists and it does. So I don't know what to tell you. But before I get into talking about this whirlwind of a musical that seriously cannot be explained, it just cannot, remember that you can find Follow me on all my social medias. You can find me at xwilsonx on Instagram, Hope Wilson with two ends and an underscore on Twitter, and Hope Wilson45 on TikTok. And remember to comment down below with all your opinions and whether you believe that this is real. Because I still can't, and I'm the one who read it. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you're wondering why the background's different, first of all, I'm in someone else's house, but I still wanted to film a video, so that's what that is. But the musical we're talking about today is Fangirls the Musical. It is the craziest thing you'll ever hear, because I'm going to talk about the plot. It's it's absolutely crazy. It's a new musical written by Eve Blake. She said that what inspired her to write this musical was Zayn leaving One Direction, and the main band in it is called True Connection, which even rhymes with One Direction. And then the front runner of the band his name is Harry and the person they casted in the original Australian cast because this is an Australian musical looks like this so it's really giving you boy band vibes but when I say this is like a psychopathic stalker Harry Styles fan fiction that's what this musical is and so I'm just gonna get into the plot and we're gonna talk about it because I honestly cannot believe this plot exists it's like the worst thing in the best way possible. And also, if you want to check this out, this is a really recent musical. You can find some of the songs on YouTube and it literally came out earlier this year, like the first production. So please go check it out. But let's get into the plot. To open the show, it's a teenage couple, a boy and a girl, living on the run and they're like almost discovered by a cop. And what they do is they kill the cop and <laughs> they dispose it in a bin and then they start singing about love and how much they love each other. So this is literally like our love is God, but with absolutely zero context whatsoever and no justification. And then you're like, what the hell? What is this musical even gonna start out as? But then the couple are interrupted when Caroline, who's our main character's mother, Edna, and she's 14 years old. I don't know why they called her Edna because that's an old woman's name in my eyes, but that's besides the point. She shouts for her to come down for dinner and you realise that the couple isn't real and it's part of Edna's involved fantasy if you will but edna gets annoyed and she gets out of going to dinner because she's like i have to study so i can keep my scholarship and basically in the world of edna and fangirls musical everyone loves this one pop star who's a young man and his name's harry he doesn't have a last name but we know it's about harry styles because it's a fan fiction musical what can i say even though it's not inspired by fan fiction it might as well be and basically the boy in edna's fantasy is the 18 year old front man of true connection the biggest boy band in the world so one Direction but without the copyright. So all the fans sing about how much they love Harry and Edna believes that she's the only one that can see the real him because she's a psychopath but it gets worse honestly. She believes that he's secretly depressed. He wants to leave the pop star life and then she sings about it. So Edna has two best friends Jules and Brianna. Jules is hyper focused on getting a boyfriend that's all she cares about and Brianna's really insecure and she thinks that no one's gonna think she looks hot because that's like what teens should be worrying about <laughs> but after a fight with Jules where Jules calls Edna crazy for thinking that her and Harry are gonna be together forever Edna doesn't have any friends anymore she lost her two best friends and um, because it's a musical Edna decides to sing about how she's turned to meet Harry and how she's gonna see that everyone's wrong about her and she really is the one for Harry even though it would be illegal but you know anyway later Caroline Edna's mom tries to warn Edna against wasting her potential because she spends so much time obsessing over Harry and Edna's annoyed she's like no one can tell me what to do so she's like I'm gonna go do homework but she doesn't actually do homework and this was the first point where I was like oh this is actually gonna get quite funny I can see where this is going now because Edna logs onto a fan fiction forum yes they're aware of fan fiction in this universe to talk to her best mate online Salty Pringle which is a terrible username but what can I say and Pringle's like oh look at these new stories about Harry 
and they sing about it because it's a musical. Edna basically asks Salty if her fan fiction about killing the cop that we saw in the beginning is like too crazy. But Salty's like, nah, it's great. And like, you're psychic because some fans have basically broken into Harry's hotel room and discovered like an empty sheet of antidepressants. So Edna's like, oh my God, Harry is secretly depressed. I was right. And she decides that because she was right about that, that's a sign that she must now meet Harry and save him from his mental health. And the next morning, True Connection, which is the band, which isn't One Direction, they announce new tour dates and they're basically going to Edna's hometown. And everyone across Australia is like, why the ticket price is so high, which I guess is probably pretty accurate to real life. Edna's like, mom, you have to let me go. You have to. But Caroline cousin can't afford it. And so Edna's having a breakdown. And then at school, Brianna tells Jules that her parents also won't let her have a ticket, but Jules is going with her mom. And the girls are like in despair. Jules tells Edna to like figure out a way for them to all go. And <laughs> so Edna pressures Jules to blackmail her rich mother into buying tickets for them all and uses the fact that Jules's mother is buying her love during the divorce that is going on in her life. And so Jules phones her mom and she also threatens to expose this affair that's also been going on in this time until she gives in and so they're all like yes we're all gonna go to the concert well, hey. so Edna goes back and she talks to Salty Pringle on the fan fiction forum and she's like I need to find a way to be with him alone so she asks him to help her write a story where a fan is alone with Harry at a True Connection concert which is literally like every fan fiction to do with band people I swear even though I've never read one, but I'm assuming that's gonna be what it's about. So Salty, Salty Pringle, proposes this plan, but it's like way too crazy. So Edna's like, nah, screw that. And in a fantasy, she imagines meeting Harry and she realizes she could like pass my note so they could run away together. Edna basically is like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. I'll just do that. And was like, yeah, I'll do that in real life because that'll definitely work. But then tragedy strikes, right? Because Jules has betrayed Edna and only purchased one more ticket for Brianna and now now the concert's sold out and tickets are like way way more expensive all the people like selling like secondhand tickets and Edna's distraught um so she ends her friendship with Jules and Brianna for them lying to her about getting this ticket even though she asked her to blackmail her mother and months pass and Edna spirals into a depression because of her not being able to meet Harry so her mom is like mm, kind of concerned about this and tells her like you know you can speak to me Edna like shouts at her and tells her why she even became a mother if she couldn't afford a, a like a true connection ticket caroline is very hurt by this obviously as you would be and, and she says she loves her and she leaves through edna is then seen with some rope and some like chemicals like i don't know if it's acid or what but it, it's something something dangerous let's just say that so it's the night of the concert and jules and brianna are getting ready at jules house having a nice time and brianna's like oh i'm everyone's gonna think i'm cool everyone's gonna think i'm hot i'm at this this concert and Jules hopes she can find a boyfriend somewhere in the crowd and Brianna tells Jules you know I kind of feel guilty that we're not including Edna but Jules is like nah she was really immature she was holding us back but she has a rope and she's gonna say how sorry everyone's gonna be after this and you're like um where is this going but trust me it, it only gets crazy from here so the concert is over and we flash to Edna's bedroom and we learn why she has the rope and the chemicals and it's because she is blindfolded bound and gagged harry in her bedroom and that's the end of act one right that's only act one like it just gets crazier honestly so basically edna's like seeing harry in real life the first time and she's having a freak out and he is very scared you know understandably he's been kidnapped by a 14 year old girl she's like oh i have to chloroform you again so that you don't shout and no one finds you right so by this point harry's been gone for a while people don't know where he is vigils are being held people like find hashtag find harry or whatever else and edna basically tells her mom caroline she's too sick to go to school and she has to stay at home to work and when jules reads the news she's confronted with her own mortality and she but then when jules read the news um edna's friend she like doubles down on a quest for a boyfriend she's like this isn't the most important thing right now and brianna thinks about attending her local vigil because they both love harry but not in the same way as edna does so back in edna's room 
Harry's like, why'd you kidnap me? And she has little note cards and she's presenting her why. And it's <laughs> like she's a, she's literally a psychopath with absolutely no empathy. And she was like, there's no other way your management would let me do this, obviously. And he, you wouldn't be able to leave the band and have your own life. Therefore, she is his only way out. So she tells him, let's run away together and gives like all the info and all the supplies and like so fake IDs and cash and disguises and a fake baby so the people think they're a couple and Harry's like yeah yeah definitely but as soon as she unties him he makes a run for it and she runs after him again obviously and people still don't know where Harry is so everyone's like please don't please come back Harry every all the same and people start getting like stranger and stranger with to show their support and it's getting kind of weird so um Salty talks to Edna and asks um to help get a hashtag banned on Twitter to prevent um self-harm among fans which the fact that they put this in it really weirds me out that they put that in but I kind of get why but it was scary nonetheless and Caroline's like getting more concerned Edna's mom and she sees this news story for grieving fans going flipping over to Jules because I know this is a lot of cuts here cuts there but we're getting there I promise she answers a call from her dad really in that in the divorce neither of them want her what the hell and whilst this is happening Brianna's trying to recreate photos from the night of the concert after discovering that Jules is delete all the photos to save space on her phone. RIP the friendship between Jules and Brianna, I guess. And then Edna comes back with Harry, who's now tied to a wheelie chair with household cables. And in a fight, she realizes that she can't convince Harry to run away with her. Harry's just like, call the police and let me go because this is really, really weird, like it is. And we s- they have a little trio, and it's them all singing about their awful lives. So one of them being Brianna, thinking that she's not good enough and she's not cool enough you know the normal kind of thing that you sing about in team musicals and then we have the kind of little more extreme but still pretty realistic of the neglection of Jules by both her parents and then we just have Edna talking about whether she feels guilty but not really for kidnapping a pop star and tying him to a chair but Edna reaches out to Salty again coming up with a new ending for the kidnapping story and basically Edna wants an ending where their protagonist aka herself realizes that harry will never run away from her and finds a way to reverse her accent so she never gets found out and salty's like nah the only realistic way out is if the fan kills harry and it will make great drama in the story hmm interesting (laughs) but caroline comes home early and edna chloroforms harry to conceal him in a wardrobe as you do and caroline tells edna that you know she's aware that harry's disappearance has an effect on her and she tries to comfort her and she tells her that the police have found security footage of someone putting a heavy suitcase in an unmarked van outside the venue on the night of the concert oh no and Edna busy tells Caroline to let her go to sleep and Caroline sings about how she hopes that Edna will come to her with her problems like a normal mum thing so then Brianna goes to meet Jules at the vigil but Jules is nowhere to be found and at the vigil fans share their grief which quickly turns into like anger because they see their feelings aren't being taken seriously by the media and everyone's got like this new radical idea of feminism I guess from this and Brianna basically shows up at Jules's house demanding to know why she abandoned her crazy and this is when I don't know why this comes back but it does Jules is like I got a boyfriend we're together now and Brianna basically says that Jules needs to recognize how badly they've treated Edna and that they should apologize because they haven't heard from her or seen her in days so they're kind of concerned for her now but Edna's still been worrying about what Salty Pringle said and she can't kill Harry she's not that bad eh. and Edna decides to give herself up to the police but before phoning them she realizes that if she does this she will be seen for the rest of her life as like a little girl and no one will like take her seriously and so she hates this fact that she's just will always be seen as like a child but just as she's like about to call the police Jules and Brianna like burst into her room unannounced and so she's very caught off guard and they hear a male voice yelling from inside Edna's wardrobe and they open the wardrobe and they see it's Harry in the wardrobe. So now Jules and Brianna both know that Edna has kidnapped Harry. So Brianna wants to call the police like any normal person uh, but Jules is like no and starts flirting with Harry and sitting on his lap whilst he's tied to a chair. 
right? I told you it gets weird. And she tries to take off his gag, but he bites her. And Jules is like in pain. And he won't let go of like biting her hand. So Brianna hits him over the head with Edna's laptop and knocks him out. And all the girls are like, what the hell do we do now? And Jules is like, let's kill him. But Brianna's like, mm, maybe we should just drug him and dump him in the woods. And Edna's like, you know, I'll drive. I have a stolen van, which I kidnapped Harry in earlier. So I'll take you. And while they're all panicking, Caroline walks into the room and sees this missing global pop star in her daughter's bedroom. And Caroline's like, no, you're not going to be driving anywhere because I'll drive. <laughs> Like, I seriously can't get over where this goes. She's like, oh, look, it's this kidnapped pop star. Should we turn him into police? No, I'm going to protect my daughter and I'll drive and we'll drug him and I'll drive. So after all this, Harry comes back and no one believes that Harry was kidnapped by a 14-year-old girl and everyone's like, it's fake, it's so implausible. And Harry basically leaves the band shortly after. He comes back and realised they didn't actually love Harry. Like, they just loved the feeling of loving something and being in a community who, like, supported each other. If that kind of makes sense. Edna, Jules and Brianna basically just are like, we changed a lot. You know, knocking out a pop star and driving into the woods really changes a person. And they're happy how they've all come through it together and are, like, more confident in themselves. But Brianna's like, who maybe one day will be caught. And that's the end. The fact that this show exists and that is like the entire plot of the show is absolutely insane to me. Completely insane. And I did listen to some of the music and if you like stuff like Six or like just contemporary musical theatre, it's very that. Like I think mix Six with like We Are The Tigers, which is another good show, and then kind of mix that with just general contemporary musical theatre and I think that's kind of what you'll find this show is. I think the story is amazing. I think it has so many plot twists and you're like, how has someone actually produced this? Because it's absolutely insane, but completely and utterly enjoyable. I would love to be in this show. <laughs> Just for the sheer statement of being able to say I was in a Harry Styles One Direction fanfiction musical and everyone looks at me like that must be the worst thing in existence when in reality it's really good. I mean, I do have a few qualms with it, especially the mentions of like self-harm and stuff. I don't think that was probably the best move. I feel like I understand why they put it in, but maybe they should have been a little, not necessarily more specific but just a little less like on the nose but you know I think this show is amazingly crazy and I definitely think you should check it out. You can find the songs on YouTube. I might link some of them down below because this show, <laughs> this show, uh, it's, it's, it's a Harry Potter fan fiction musical. What can I say? The title says it all, really. It's crazy. But I think that's all I have to say for this video. If you liked it, you can like it or subscribe. If you feel like, you know, it really helps me out. I'm on the road to 1000 subscribers. If you want to follow me on social media, you can find them all across here. But thank you so, so much for watching. Keep enjoying musicals as much as me and I will see you in the next one.